Hello everybody, my name is Jemmy, and today I will be giving you a brief overview on indexing slicing strings. So basically what this is, is, um, you know, we're going to be do looking at indexing, slicing, uh, and mostly we're going to be doing these two topics on strings, so let's get started. So first off, we need to know that in a Python string, uh, each character is labeled into a number. So pretend we have this string uh, or a text. If you don't know what a string is, it's basically a word or a text um, in quotation marks or single quotes like this one. So pretend we have the string Pikachu, right? Uh, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There is seven letters in Pikachu. However, in Python, we start counting from zero. So P would equal to zero, I would equal to one, K would equal to two, A three, C four, H uh, five, and U six. So this is the way we count in Python um, from zero up. And so this is basically how the numbers are assigned to the letters. And we will be looking at how to index that. So let's look, uh, pretend we only want Pika, right? We only want Pika and that would be from zero to three. So let's do that. Okay, uh, this Pika. However, you might notice it's not zero to three because if you were to do zero to three, it would only do pick. This is the the reason this happens is because once you're indexing something, you need the stop or the ending to be greater than the limit. So if you want to stop at three, you have to go to four. So, oops, sorry, four like this, and it should print out pika, and that is a rule while you're indexing. Also, a negative indexing also is there. So we learn how to do uh, indexing with positive numbers. Now let's learn how to index with negative numbers. So n is the last one, right? Is oh, This is Pokemon now, so it's not Pikachu. It might be a little confusing, but it's okay. So the last number now is the greatest number. Here, I'll put it this way. I'll just change it back to Pikachu so we can get a better understanding. Pikachu like so, okay, and I'll put these two next to each other, like so, oops, sorry, um, if I paste it down, yeah, it's gonna mess it up, but basically, we're gonna have zero here, right, um, and we're going to have uh, P here, and then down here, we're going to have, oh, we're gonna, ha we're not gonna have P there, we're gonna have a dash there, and then P here, so that would be zero, uh, and then we just get this one and put it there. But yeah, you probably get the point. Um, sorry, I, I will put it in so we can see it better. So basically, uh, it's kind of like a number line. If you ever uh, experienced a number line before, it's like counting negative to positive. So let's take a look. It sort of looks like this. Oops, sorry. Okay, so here, this is what it looks like. Okay, so zero is P, right? And then, um, so zero is P, uh, and then if we want to count backwards, negative one would be U, negative two would be H, negative three would be C, negative four would be A, negative five would be K, negative six would be I, and negative seven would be P. Now, the reason U cannot be zero in this case is because P right here is already zero, so you can't have it, uh, two numbers, or not two numbers, two letters that share the same number, it just won't work. So once we get this information that uh, of negative indexing, let's try it out. So pretend we want Pika again, right? Uh, let me change this to Pikachu. So pretend we only want Pika again, but this case we're going to be using negative, right? We're going to be using negative indexing. So seven is over here, so this is the start, right? And the stop is... Uh, a, which is negative 4, but you can see that uh, the same rule applies. The end of the slice of the slice or the stop needs to be above one above the limit. So if negative 4 plus 1, it would be negative 3. So we have to put the stop to negative 3 to get Pika. Let's try it out. And there we go, Pika. Now let's move on to slicing strings. So slicing strings um, is kind of like indexing, but it's different in a way. Uh, let's run it first. So you can see that this is kind of what the outcome of the indexing is. However, the process behind it is a bit different. 
So we have the R string, which is Python and Go. By the way, that's the name of this series. And uh, S1, which is slice one, equals to slice uh, nine comma eleven. This is how you slice. You have the first. Uh, you had the first. How you call it? The first number, which is where it starts, and then the last, the second number, which is where it stops. And this, the rules apply for slicing two. The ending needs to be one above the limit. And uh, I'll show you a unique part of slicing later on. But for now, this is basically slicing. So it's kind of like indexing, but there is a special case called step, and I will be showing that later. So now we're going to be looking at step. And in step, what it does is it skips. So pretend you have uh, this whole chunk of numbers, which is actually a string. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? And you want to have only the odd numbers, right? Uh, we would do 0 to 9, which is 1 through 9. And we skip by 2. So 1, instead of going to 2, it goes 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So that is what step does. It uh, It's how much you step or how much you skip. So in this case, it goes by 2. So instead of going by 1, it goes 1, 1, 2, and 2, 3. And then it goes 1, 2 to 5, 1, 2 to 7, and so on. So let's run this. You can see it prints out all the uh, odd numbers. However, if we want only the positive numbers, we need to change the starting point instead of 0 to 1. And now it prints out all the even numbers. OK. Let's move on to the next one, which is slicing with for loops. So uh, slicing, we can also use it with for loops. In this case, right now, I am going to be getting the first uh, the first letter of the string. So we're going to be making a function here. Our function is called the slicer. And inside the slicer, there's a parameter called string. And uh, after that, we have, we're going to um, set an uh, empty string, which is result. Result is a string, but there's nothing inside of the string. Um, and then we're going to put up a for loop. 4a in range len string. Uh, len is for length, so it finds out how long string is, and then it repeats it that much times. If a mod 2 equals equals to 0, if you don't understand, a mod 2 is basically uh, how what is the remainder of a divided by 2. And we might have you might have learned this in like third grade or two second grade, two grade, second grade. Um, but basically, when you divide a number and there's something left over, there's going to be r and then that number. This is kind of like that. And if r equals to 0, then it goes on to the next one. So if uh, a mod 2 equals equals to 0, then result plus equals to string a. So this might be uh, a little tricky, but this what it means is result equals to result plus string. So it's going to add itself again and string. Um, but we can shorten that down by doing plus equal to. So it will add string A, and it will return the result, which means it will print it out. And it will. this is to just, and that's the end of the function. And then this code is just to call up the function and put in the parameter, which is Python and Go. So let's run this. And you can see that it starts off with a P. Uh, slicer is used for getting the first word. So if we can type anything like so, it will always get the first letter. Whether or not it's capitalized, it will always get the first letter. So uh, that is slicer, and let's move on to the next one. So now we're going to be looking at slicing string formatting. Um, basically, we're going to format uh, slicing, if I can say that. But this is what it looks like. So Blissy's nickname is Bliss. I don't know, sorry. Um, I'm really bad at making up these sentences, but uh, I just wanted something that works. So we have a string that says Blissy, and we're going to print out a sentence which says Blissy's nickname is and then in here, instead of typing out bliss, we can uh, we type out percentage sign s. Uh, this is so that we can replace this right here with anything we want. So once we did that, we can go outside of the string, but we're still inside of the parentheses. Uh, and we put uh, percentage sign string 0 to 5. 0 to 5, actually, I don't need the 0. Um, but basically what this does, it, it's, get, it's going to get blissy or bliss from blissy, uh, and it'll just print that out. So right now it should still print bliss. And if we were to change this one to one, then it would be list, like so. So yeah, that is another way to format slicing. Next one, we're gonna be formatting a string. So uh, this one, we have Magikarp has blah, 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 attack power. So this is another way of formatting string. 
uh, so this is the string, and then we're gonna print string dot format attack equals to five. Attack right here is right this one. So this is the variable, and we can set what the variable is. So right now we're gonna set it as five, um, and it'll just print out magic harp has five attack power, like so. Now let's move on to uppercase string. So this will basically uh, make your whole text uppercase if there's two capital letters inside of the string. Um, but if there's one or zero, then it's not going to make it capital or uppercase. But if it has two or more capital letters, then it'll make the whole string capitalized. So let's look at it. So our function is called uppercase or upper convert. And there is a parameter called string. Uh, once we get into it, we're going to set upper variable, which is a uh, variable to zero for i in string. If i dot upper parentheses equals equals to i, this makes sure that um, if it's uppercase or not. And this one upper var plus equals to one. Uh, remember that this is basically upper var equals to upper var plus one. And if upper var is greater or equal to three. Upper var, by the way, is the count of how much upper cases there are. Um, if it's greater or equal to three, return string dot upper return string. And this will basically print out the, make it so that the whole, uh, the whole text is upper uppercase. And then after here, we just trigger the function by doing upper convert and then putting in the parameter, which is Python and Go. And currently it only has one. Wait, I gotta change this to two. Okay, currently it only has one uh, uppercase or capital letter so it shouldn't trigger oh oh wait I forgot and you said this is three uh, sorry um like so it shouldn't trigger yet but once we fill in two or more so like Python and go like this then you can see it makes the whole text uppercase and if we want to increase the limit so like pretend two capital letters are allowed but three is not we can change this text to four and now uh, with two capital letters it won't be all capitalized and at the end we can if we want to trigger it, then we just put in O like so, and there we go. It triggers and makes everything capitalized. Let's look at max value. Max value is very interesting. I find it very fun to uh, experiment with. And basically, string equals to max, and then max has uh, parentheses, and inside the parentheses, there is a text. Um, this text is just the alphabet uh, in order, A, B, C, to Z, um, and then let's print string. So as you can see, it only prints Z. This is because max value will find, if it's a string, it will find uh, the one with the most value, I can say that. So Z is the farthest out in uh, the alphabetical order. So it goes for Z first since it is the max value that it has. And then after that, if we can also do it with numbers. However, the number is still a string. So it's a string of numbers. Um, and we have one, two, nine. So if we were to print this out, it would go to nine, like so. And this is like a scenario where you can use it if you have ever an assignment to find the the alphabet with the lowest letter, or like the lowest, uh, yeah, the lowest, the letter that is the least in the alphabetical order, if that makes sense, then um, not the least, but the most value in alphabetical order, then you just use this code and type in your sentence then it'll find it for you, which is in this case, Y. So from very is Y. Um, and yeah, that is today's lesson. However, today I did prepare a little exercise that we can do together. So this exercise, well, it's not really an exercise, but I wanna show, oh, no, don't, 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 don't look at that, don't look at that. Okay, so I just want to challenge you guys a little bit and I want to see what this code does. So uh, at first it prints out enter number and number equals to input. So basically we can uh, enter in our stuff. And then i equals to two, which is a variable, while i is less or equal to int number, which is the input, j equals to two, count equals to zero. This is just to set up some variables. While j is less or equal to i, if i mod j equals equals to zero, count equals to count plus one, Again, I can simplify this to plus equals to. But after that, uh, in here, j equals to j plus 1. If int count is less or equal to 1, and int number mod 1 equals to equals to 0, print i, i equals i plus 1. What does this do? Well, since I, already, I made it, I think I know what it does. 
um, basically it will uh, you put in a number and it will find the prime factorization of that number. So pretend I put like in ten, uh, so shift enter and like I put in ten, then it'll be two and five because those are prime numbers and if they times each other, then it'll equal to ten. So this is just to find the prime factorization. But if you ask, what if they, but no shoot, this is the wrong one. Um, can you stop? Please? Okay, thank you. So, what if they put in a prime number, like 3, right? So then it'll just print out 3, because if it's a prime number, it'll print itself out again. And now let's look at the second one. This one basically will reverse any text uh, that you put in, and once it reverses it, it not only does reversing, it will also, um, it will also make, it will be like, alternating between capital A, capital case, capital case, gosh, uppercase and lowercase letters, so pretend you put it in like uh, the, right? It'll be E, H, T, but E will be capitalized, H will be lowercase, and T would be capitalized again. So it's pretty cool, and uh, if you want to see your name backward, like Jemmy, and then make it really look weird, then you can do you can use this code, and there we go. Yamaga! <laughs> y M Meg. Um, and you can see that it's alternate, alternate, alternating between uppercase and lowercase letters uh, but yeah this is today's exercise and today's lesson uh, it's a 16 minute video but I hope you enjoyed thank you very much for watching see you in the next one bye